What's up guys? All right, I know a lot of you are onto this, but some of you may not be, and I wanna talk about childhood trauma and health problems. <sighs> if there's any professionals watching this, they're like, ah, uh, yeah. Like when you have a dysregulated nervous system or you've got all these emotional wounds that have not been healed, they will manifest in your physiology. There is plenty of data to back this up. I've been a, on a bit of a bender on this and a bunch of other cool stuff. <laughs> I've been in a lot of research lately and this one do you guys know about a study called the ACE study ACE stands for adverse child events and they did a study on 17,000 people over five years to examine this to see if childhood trauma resulted in health issues later in life and they gave them an ACE score which meant like how many traumas did you have right so some of the traumas were you know sexual abuse physical abuse having a mentally ill parent being neglected um, what else uh, a parent with an addiction a parent who was incarcerated like they had all these different traumas and then they gave them a score and it was it's absolutely insane you should look it up because the ones that have like an a score of like five so they had like five different traumas all happen they have like 400 percent increase of cardiovascular disease or diabetes or cancer or all these things and if anybody is in like any sort of holistic health coaching naturopathic doctors like functional medicine doctors i know you guys know this it's almost like as soon as i find out you know, somebody will say about seven years ago, all this shit started. I'm like, well, what happened seven years ago? And then it's like this huge trauma. And I'm like, okay, so let's go back to childhood and find out when that actually started, right? Because a lot of the traumas that we experience in our adult lives are a result of the stories we created about life as little kids when shit happened, because we didn't have the consciousness to know how to process that stuff, right? So we developed these stories of like, it's not safe to feel my feelings or it's not safe to express myself or I have to please everybody so that I'm safe. And then you get end up with adrenal fatigue or hypothyroidism or some of these things because of these stories that you created as a kid based off the trauma that you had. Nobody loves me. Okay, guess what you're gonna spend your adult, whole adult life doing? Trying to prove that you're lovable. And in whatever ways as a little kid you found that you could get love, I guarantee you're freaking obsessed with that shit now as an adult, you know what I'm saying? Or just unresolved gut issues or heart heartbreak, right? They have correlations in science now to dementia, Alzheimer's, brain things from all of this resulting from trauma. So like the reason I'm sharing this is because I feel like only trying to optimize your health through the physiological route is like brushing teeth and eating Oreos at the same time. It's barely scratching the surface. But when we go deeper into emotional healing, our bodies can relax. We can literally release these energetic like cog points that we have that are causing us to stay in that state. Because let's say you're like, your trauma response was the fawn trauma response. Are you guys familiar with that? It's like the people pleasing one. It's more of an emotional trauma response. So if your trauma response was, I have to be a people pleaser, and then you're like optimizing your health, but you're running yourself into the ground constantly, getting totally out of alignment with yourself by saying yes to everyone and everything. You're not even remotely close to the place of thriving physiological health that you could be when you're okay with being calm, collected, what I say matters, what I think matters. I can do that. I actually just don't want to do that. So I'm not gonna, right? Like when you can be in that state, your body can relax and know that it's safe. So I just wanted to make a quick push for like, if you have, if you had shit as a kid and you're just fine, no, you're not. You are not fine. You hear me? <laughs> you're not fine, dude. I've seen this over and over and over. I work with it every day somebody comes with me and they, they just want to lose weight and we find out all the shit that's under the surface. I'm like, dude, this is so much more than just like counting calories and working out, dude. Like, yeah, we can do the health stuff, but like we got to address these deeper pain points that are leading you into this place of self-sabotage. I don't really like the energy of the phrase self-sabotage because it's mean. It's like when we can get into empathy, it's like, dude, why though? Why? What is the pain? What is the wound? What is actually freaking going on? And get more into what's wrong, you know, and have empathy for ourselves. Then everything can start coming into alignment. Yeah, Karen. Yeah, dude. And like, 
so, sometimes it's not obvious, you know, but I'm telling you, if you have chronic things, even if it's just a lot of muscular tightness or gut issues, or maybe you've got something more severe, like some sort of chronic health issue, I'm telling you at its root, it is an emotional wound and the physiology gets all whacked out as a result and your habits, the way you show up in life will be all whacked out and out of alignment as a result of that, making it very, very difficult to be in a self-honoring, calm, collected, loving, I want what's best for me. I actually deserve the freaking best because I see myself, right? It's really hard to get to that place when you still are running around with this lens that you're seeing life through that is causing you to feel like you're not enough. You got to prove your value, you know, all just all these distortions. So you want to heal your physiology. You got to feel your, um, heal your soul. You got to heal your emotional body. Addictions, addictions. You know, I'm reading this book called the conscious parent right now that is so freaking good. And I love the way she put this. She's like, addictions happen when we cannot accept and be loving with what is, and we feel like that addiction is gonna help us get to someplace better. That book is so good, by the way. I cannot recommend enough. I don't even care if you don't have kids. Read that book, The Conscious Parent. It's on Audible. So, like, for example, I love working out. I love working out. I do not have goals. It is not like a, I have to do this to be fit or whatever. It's not anything like that. It's pure freaking joy. I love my body exactly the way it is. I could gain 20 pounds of fat and still love my body exactly the way it is. I could lose some muscle. I would still love my body. I, I freaking honor it. Thank you, body. Thank you for everything that you do. Thank you. You know? And if I did gain 20 pounds of fat and my body was like, hey, dude, yo, like this, I don't feel good. Sorry. Um, I'd be like, okay, I hear you. All right. I'll show up for you. Got, I got your back, you know, and staying present with your body. What is it telling you? What is it telling you? So the wounds generally start emotionally and then the symptoms show up in our physiology and they're like a little portal. They're like a little magic portal alert saying, Hey, something's wrong. And when you dive into it, right? I hear so much of this. Like, like I'm so frustrated with my body. You sound like a freaking asshole. I'm just going to be real with you right now. If you are frustrated with your body, <laughs> that is like a one, you need a 180 on your mindset there. It's not your body's fault. Your body's always here to support you and take you through life. It is literally doing the most insanely magical things all the time that you cannot even freaking comprehend. None of us can. We're still trying to catch up and learn. So if your body is suffering, it's not, I can't stand my body. I'm so frustrated with my body. It's not your body's fault. Your body's just trying to give you feedback saying, Hey, I could use some help here, here, and here. And when we can show up that way in that energy and be like, Oh, okay. I hear you. I'm here to help. I'm actually here to listen. It's just like any other relationship. If you're one of those parents that's showing up with your teenager and the energy of, I can't stand them. I'm sick of them. I can't even handle them. You're an asshole you're being an asshole. And I say that in love, <laughs> but it's true, dude. If you want to heal that relationship and you want to get into a good place, you have to love what is, accept them as they are. Listen, finally freaking listen, like actually take it in. Listen, like what's it and don't have anything to say in response to it. It's just like freaking hear them, right? Be in it with them and be like, damn, okay, actually shit. That would be really hard. That's it. <laughs> and when we can get into that place with our body of like, oh, you know, like I've, I'm still working on some stuff right now in my um, lats and like mid traps and I freaking found it, dude. I've got like an overactive oblique. Like it's been this little mystery. I'm like, what is going on there? Right. It's not like a stupid shoulder. I'm like, no, no, really. Like what's going on? And actually I'm going to probably be posting about this soon, but I think that my obliques have been overactive since my four pregnancies and I've never, it's kind of embarrassing professionally, but I just never even really like thought about it. And I finally noticed it and I'm like, Oh dude, my obliques are like really tight and overactive. And it's probably pulling all that down. Got it. So not, I'm not frustrated with my shoulder. I'm not frustrated with my obliques. I'm now I'm doing uh, self myofascial release going into my massage therapist regularly, regularly. <laughs> okay. So it's just like, Oh God, I hear you. Oh, Okay. I just connected a Wi-Fi. So anyway, that's my message. Um, be loving, 
be gentle with your soul, with your body. Don't be so hard on yourself. If you're struggling with addiction, if you're struggling with mental health, if you're struggling with like self-sabotage or making poor choices that you're like, you've just been shaming yourself and being so hard on yourself. I'm telling you that stuff all comes from wounds on, oh, I bet 99% of them are in childhood. Okay. So when we can look at it that way and say, Hey, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Be like that big brother, big sister to yourself. Hey dude, it's okay. What's wrong? What's wrong? Right. And then get outside help and someone to help you through it from a place of compassion. You're not only will your soul start to thrive, but your whole body will start to thrive. And I truly 100% like zero doubt in my mind know that we cannot fully thrive in our physiology until we are healthy in our soul. It will manifest. I promise you, I see it every day. Okay. And so we need like buckets of compassion, buckets of compassion on ourselves and others. When you can recognize this in yourself, you can have more compassion on others too. And it's like, dude, like (laughs) that's, that's just where they're at on their journey and much love and support to them right? I'm on my journey too. So like if we can have more love and more compassion, more support on ourselves, on our bodies, on others, we can thrive. But the harder we are on ourselves and it's toxic, it penetrating our entire human collective consciousness is be freaking hard on myself. Never enough. Be hard on everybody else. Judgment, shame. Like it's, oh, it's so toxic, dude. And it, it's destroying our souls and our bodies. They are interconnected on a very easy level. A way to know that <laughs> I always tell my clients, I'm like, if you're wondering if your emotions are attached to your physiology, um, I'm going to have you take your shirt off right now on this zoom call in front of everybody. <laughs> Woo! Like, if you really thought about doing that, you would be like, all of a sudden, release a bunch of stress chemicals, right? So think about that. Think about guilt, shame, anger, fear, apathy. Think about how those energies are affecting our physiology. We know this from the fight or flight response, right? Like, we know this on certain levels. We kind of have some examples of it. It's like, yes, I know that if I get super scared or anxious or whatever that my gut locks up, right? But this is happening on every level in our body. My last thing I'll say is let other people help you invest in help. I was seriously having like a spiritual experience on the massage table. My massage girl is so freaking good. I guess I'll give her a shout out, even though I'm selfishly not wanting to, because y'all going to like fill up her schedule if you live in Utah. (laughs) But her name's Julie and she's at Optimal Wellness Center with Dr. Bruce Nielsen, who's the chiropractor I go to. And I was just, she was working on like my neck and shoulders. Seriously, I was having a huge emotional release and I was just laying there like, thank you, Julie. Thank you. Thank you for being so freaking good at this. Thank you for like applying yourself and learning and knowing and using your intuitive gifts. Thank you. You know, and I was seriously like, I can't even tell you. I like, it felt like I had been like carrying the burden of the world on my shoulders, which you guys know I can kind of get that way. <laughs> and it was like this physical release that created an emotional release in me. It was just like, you, it's not your responsibility, girlfriend. Don't worry about it. <laughs> just do you, girl. You know? And like, that's just an example. I've had so many of those. So like healing, man, if you want to thrive in your physiology, you literally can't unless you're willing to heal all these stories that it caused suffering and proving our worth and judgment and shame and anger and nervous system dysregulation and all this shit. Okay. It's so much more than just like working out is super healthy. Eating healthy is super healthy. Supplementing for shit that you need is super healthy. And if you don't heal your freaking soul and all the shit that happened in childhood, I always say you, no one leaves childhood unscathed. I don't care who you are. Trauma is relative. Your mom might have just been busy a lot trying to be the perfect mom. And you got all this like self-worth shit because of that. And she's like, shit, I was just trying to do the best I could. And I wasn't present with you. And you now you feel like you're not valuable or not worth people's time, right? Like that's a simple example. We all have stuff. And so like the w- easiest path for me is I notice to healing is I notice when I'm feeling angry um, like some sort of, um, resistance towards what is. Yes. That's how I know that I have something to heal. When I'm in the lower vibrational energies of fear, anger, 
you know, judgment, apathy, like anything like that. I'm like, Ooh, what's going on in me? <laughs> right. And then if you can have that, have compassion with that, then you can be like, well, actually, what is going on with me? <laughs> when did this all start? Right. And then, you know, invest in a coach or a, somebody, <laughs> a therapist or someone to help you with that thing, you know, because if we could have healed it ourselves, we probably would have by now. You know what I mean? So that's all. Can't be healthy if our cells aren't healthy. End of story, period. All right. Thank you for joining me, guys.